Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here. That's an interesting noise to come back to an episode with, right? Uh, yeah, we got a we got a visitor here. We got a nice visitor here. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There he is, over there. Look at that. He's like an angry tauntaun. Uh, I don't know what to make of him, but uh, un very unusual creature we've got there. I'm gonna scan him. Oh, that was scanning something else. Let's go scan him. I'm really curious to what he is, and we'll pick up where we left off. He apparently is a predator. As you can see, he doesn't seem to want to attack me, but wow, I mean, look at that guy. That is actually a really cool creature. Yep, cautious. A diet is anything, so he's... Uh, let's see, a dope arm, yeah. <clears throat> oh, and it has no bones, isn't that interesting? Um, I don't even know, it reproduces grease. <laughs> okay, someone over at Hello Games needs to be, uh, yeah, we need to have a little chat with them. Uh, looks like we've got another creature over here. These are some wild creatures. Highly observant and eats grass. Oh, they can't drown either. They do produce creature eggs. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Unbelievable weird creatures. What a great noise to come back to in this episode. <laughs> Anyway, we're picking up where we left off with the expedition. Uh, I'm here, see, I've been doing the expedition for so many weeks now, over and over again, that that's what I'm stuck on. Uh, anyway, we are picking up where we left off with our uh, mission, uh, with our main playthrough at this point. Well, we're going to find the mysterious messenger, so we have to make our way into space. As you know, in the last episode, we hit up this... Uh, monolith here and it gave us the information that we need to well if you look over here it's easier the boundaries fall the walls collapse your universe awaits find us traveler so we got to head out so as you know we've already uh, gone into hyperspace i believe one time so let's take a look at our hyperdrive situation we're at 90 percent we just received in our exosuit of course uh, a hyper a warp cell so we're going to put that in our starship so we have it for safekeeping uh, we really need to get this upgraded and we're going to show you a couple tricks in this episode on getting this upgraded as quickly as possible um, we need a couple of things so what we've gotten is we have uh, storage augmentation for our ship and we have a multi-tool expansion slot we don't we do have a couple of upgrade charts we have 12 of those right now as you know I kind of glitch made those at some point but it's that's not really going to help us because then we have to go to drop pods and we'll show you about the drop pods here in just a minute actually let's show you one right now before we head into space what do you say let's do that right this second so while you're in your ship it's easier to do it here because otherwise it does that big pull back when you're on the ground so we're going to do one right now and it's going to show us where there's where there's a drop pod it may not be the closest one to you. That's the key. That's the key, right? There we go. So it's going to take us to a drop pod. Supposedly, it's supposed to be nearby. Maybe they'll fix those things. This one's an hour away, regular time. We did. We we'd spend the entire episode flying there, real time. So we're going to go ahead and pulse drive to it. Lovely planet, by the way. A little cold. <laughs> Yeah, see, other side of the planet completely. So yeah, that wouldn't have been good, huh? Alright, let's bring it on in. Okay, so this is a drop pod, in case you guys weren't aware. Those of you who are new. Keep expecting biological horrors to pop out of the ground when I get out of my ship, but I know that's not the case. That's the drop pod. Um, as a because I'm a new I'm new to the game right now, in this particular playthrough, I'm gonna gather up things as I can find them. I got an ion battery out of that. That's great. I don't need the rest of metal anymore. Got navigation data from that uh, from this post here in ten nanites, and we just got a dihydrogen jelly out of that. So that's good. Let's go to the drop pod. So this is the uh, one of the ways in which you can upgrade your exosuit and get extra slots in it. To do that, it requires sodium nitrate, which we have, a carbon nanotube, and antimatter housing. Don't ask me why the carbon nanotube is not here. It's here instead of here. I don't understand that either. But anyway, we need an antimatter housing. We need a carbon nanotube. So let's get out of this. 
and make one. So, carbon nanotube, antimatter housing. Okay? Takes takes materials. Remember, we're getting low on ferrite, so we're going to have to get some more soon. So let's now go ahead and do it. Now we have the ability to replace these. And we can put it anywhere we want. As you can see, it doesn't cost anything. You just upgrade. Um, I hate holes in my inventory slots like this. Uh, they drive me nuts. Uh, this one or this one, I'm going to go with this one this time. Okay? So, there we go. And you only get it one time. That This pod is now used up. So you have to get another one. Okay? So that's how that's done. Nothing special. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now. I am as well. Um, oh, oxygen. I'll go ahead and grab that too. I'm just going to get some rocks here. There's a lot of rocks on the ground here. Um, I've got my mining beam active. Let me just see if these are... Yeah, they are. They don't give me much. Uh, bigger rocks would be better. Like this one. Nope, that's pure. There's ferrite. Yeah, we should analyze these things before we take it. That gives us dihydrogen. And that gives us oxygen. All right. All right. Those secondary elements are always a good idea to get while you can. There we go. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good here. Oh, wow, this one just happens to be submerged. It's nice to have a halfway decent multi-tool. Alright, you think we got enough uh, ferrite now? Let's see. Well, we got 400. That's... it's not terrible. I wish we had more. But we have to get some resources. Maybe I'll start gathering up some more of those rocks. Uh, pardon me, metal from the... Um, there we go. Get some more metal from the um, uh, boxes that we find on the ground. Start doing that. Especially at my base where I can have a refiner and stuff. Alright, that should be enough for now. We're, we're in good shape. Better shape than we were, let's put it that way. Okay, so it's time to head out into space. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to show you a better way of getting uh, upgrades for your multi, uh, uh, pardon me, for your exosuit. Just like you can for your multi-tool and your ship. Okay, here we go. So, um, it says here to explore nearby planets, access the system. Let me just see here. Uh, locate the coordinates sent to you by looking for the mission icon on your HUD. Uh, Comes at the top of your ship's hop. It will help you track the signal. Okay, well, let's do that. I don't see anything but a space station. Do you see anything? Oh, oh, wait, wait. We have a signal coming in. Incoming transmission. Source unknown. You are not alone. Please, identify yourself. I'm something, something. Okay, so we're going to identify ourselves. We, I've remained silent in the past. It doesn't seem to be helping us any. Identify myself. You left me. Why did you... Tell him you don't understand. Tell him you are sorry. I don't understand. I have no idea what this guy's talking about. Of course you'd say that. Of course you'd... Psst, just like the others. Psst. Ask who you are speaking to. Ask about the others. I'm going to ask about the others. What others? There is no reply. The communicator falls silent, though the channel remains open. Okay. Ah, now we have some coordinates. So we're going to head over here. Ah, another planet. Okay. So, the planet is a paradise planet. That's good. And we haven't been here yet. This was discovered by someone, so we're in a system that was already discovered by someone else. So, that's good. And it's a beautiful planet. I mean, uh, you know, looks pretty. Don't think we've been here before ourselves. Let's see what it looks like. It looks pretty from the outside, from, from, from distance. Let's see what it looks like. It's, it's nighttime. We'll have to make it daytime in order to see what it really looks like, so. Approximate location. Slow down. Slow down. Do a scan. Nope. Not finding any buildings. 
Let's see, is there something... I see something to my left. Oh, wait a minute. We got a ship in front of us, hold on. And I don't think it's a flying ship either. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Looks like it's right there. Am I right? Yep. Let's come to a landing here. I think we might have found another ship here. Oh, we have discovered what we're looking for. Interesting. Okay, um... Do we have any other ships in our inventory right now? Nope, we don't have any others. So we sold the other one that we had. Okay, good. I didn't remember if we did or not. Okay, let's go ahead and gather up resources as we usually do. This time I'm taking the rusted metal because, uh, yeah. Alright, is a pain in the neck. Microprocessor. Awesome. Those are nice to come by. And we get some ammunition. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of a weird thing because it kind of spawned inside this. So my suggestion would be, um, for some reason, I don't know why it does this, but... There we go. Is to carve out some of this. Let's make some room and take a look around. Um, once, actually, what you can do is do a flattening technique here. Let me let me fill this back in. Hold on, because I kind of messed it up a little bit. Because the ground got messed up by what I was doing. All right, let's go with the flattening technique, right? And that way we can clear out some of the stuff above. It won't stay like this for you know forever. But for now, because that's what we need to get to, that there. Alright. That's looking a little better. Interesting. Look at that. Looks like we got a cave in here we've uncovered. Some kind of trench. That's really cool. Anyway, moving on. Alright, so now we can get to everything here. I'm going to switch back to my mind. There we go. Okay, let's get into this because we can get stuff out of it. I definitely don't need that kind of stuff. And we got some nanites. All right, good, good. So let's get over to the beacon here and see what it has to say. Um, looks like we have to repair it with sodium and chromatic metal, and we happen to have some. So it's rare that you'll come across something that you have to repair like that. Unknown signal. There are no signs of life. There is only the static of a broken communicator. So let's extract the records. Whatever message was once here has been scrambled beyond recovery. All I extract is the pilot's name, Artemis. Whoever they were, they are long gone. The only other uncorrupted data is a set of plans, an upgrade for my mining team. Okay, good. We got our advanced laser out of this. A hermetic seal and carbon nanotubes. We already got wiring loops. So, okay, good. Let's go ahead and install that real quick because that'll complete our run through here um let's see let's put it over here so i'm going to install it first we'll put the wiring looms in we need one of each of those so let's go ahead and do that real quick we can do that here that's fine uh carbon nanotube and hermetic seal right oh there it is now it's like bouncing us over to where we need to be is that bolt caster interesting all right so let me install it the rest of the way objective completed Okay, so now we can mine other items, like heavy-duty items, like the pure ferrite rocks and stuff like that. So we got that done. As you can hear by the music, you've completed, in, you've completed something here. So if we take a look, you see it's not in here anymore, so we've completed an objective. Okay, so here's the thing, though. We have a, you know, ship here that we can take. This is ours. It's probably C-Class. Oh, it's A-Class. That's nice. Um, oh, it also has some shields in it. That's good. We can uninstall those. Uh, got a couple supercharged slots over here and one over here. This would be a great ship to have if it wasn't so damaged because everything requires a lot of materials to fix. As you get uh, later on in your game, as you, know, you, you get more and more, more and more and more and more and more materials that you have saved up in cargo containers, you can repair all this. You'll come across and go, oh, okay, great. And blah, 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 blah. You're going through and fixing everything. So. Especially if it's a ship you really want. I don't like shuttles, so I'm probably not going to keep this. But it's worth money, and I can also uninstall this, and either it's 9%, it's really not that great, um, but, you know, it, it's useful. I can install it in my own, I can uninstall it instead. 
you know, rather than just move it, I can uninstall and get the materials from it. So it, to me, that's worth more than what we got. And it only requires a little bit to get this up and running. So let's go ahead and take the ship. Claim it. And we'll repair that portion of it. We just need a hermetic seal. What is that? Hermetic seal and a metal plate. Right, right, right. One of each. Glad we got all those rocks. And the ship is now fixed. And we're going to uninstall this. See, we can store it. We can un we can do that with it if we want and take it. But I'm just going to uninstall it. And I've got 50 sodium out of it. And I got 50 chromatic metal out of it. And I got a wiring load. So that is really, really handy. Don't really need anything else. We can't uninstall the photon cannon. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Back to our ship. Our main ship. And we'll sell that later. So now that we have it, we can pull it in anywhere we want. Isn't that pretty cool the way the uh, rock got cut out? It's like perfectly cut out. It won't stay that way, but there you are. So this is a pretty planet. Um, let's. I'm going to go into picture mode for a second. Put the sun up above and take a look. Oh, that is that's that's a beautiful planet, man. This is this is gorgeous. I'm really impressed by this. Huh? You know. Let's see if we can't find a building real quick. Do we have a... I don't know. Do we have an economy scanner on our ship? I don't know if we do or not. I don't remember. No economy scanner. Okay, I didn't think so. We'll have to get one of those. Um, but for now, let me just look for a building or something nearby. Because this is beautiful. This is a, a very nice runner-up to the base that we're creating right now. Love the ocean features here. Very pretty. And that's probably nothing more than a little campground. Yeah, that's all that is. Anything that's really close to a shoreline 90% of the time is going to be just a little campground like that. They don't have anything. And, you know, a good place, once you get the Nautilin, the underwater uh, submarine, submersible, if you will, um... Finding crashed ships underwater is easier than finding them on regular ground. I just want to find some place I can drop down a base computer. Because any place you like to go to, you can throw down a base computer. You know, uh, especially if you have the materials to do it. Uh, chromatic metal, you know, things like that. So, you drop that down and then go back into your, the base computer and name it something that is recognizable, like different Paradise Planet or something like that, which is what I intend to do. Um, once I can find a base that I can drop it down on. And I keep scanning here. Your, your scanner will almost always find a building of some sort. Almost always. Sometimes it will not find one. And there may be one you're passing over and didn't realize. Now, this place is kind of devoid of buildings somehow. There's something there. It's not really on a shoreline, or is it? Not a building. I'm trying to get away from campgrounds. Ah, this one's higher up. This one should be something. Uh, it's a, a little bit larger campground is what we're looking at here. Um, Got some caves. Ah, what the heck. Let's go ahead and just do it. How's our... Thrusters, okay. Alright, let's drop down a base computer here real quick. Alright, we're going to call this something else. So we obviously go in, we claim it. There we go, let it claim. And then we're going to go back into the base computer and, like I said, rename it. And I think we'll just call this Second Paradise Planet or something like that. That'll be good. Very, very plain, very, you know, you know, not very thick. He, second, paradise, question mark. That way I can take a look at it later. That's it. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and you can always, uh, you know, from any space station uh, or portal, you can come back to this base. Even though there's no portal here, you just can't portal out of this place, obviously. So, oh, what, look at the, look, 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 look. Sunrise. Look at that. How pretty is that? This is a pretty place, man. Alright. Alright, we're done. Um, 
that exclamation point at the top, by the way, is that crash ship that we were just at. So that's in case you're wondering about it. All right. So what's next? Oh, I just had told us. Uh, search for clues about Artemis on this and other worlds. Uh, press escape to access the guide. Okay. Uh, received a set of mysterious coordinates from another source. Felt the signal and found the wreckage of an abandoned starship. There was little to be gained from the wreck, but the distress beacon contained a hailing frequency labeled Artemis. There's nothing for it but to continue exploring. Answers may be found in the stars. Okay, let's head up. I think this is going to be our introduction to the anomaly. There it is. Okay, good. Ah! Nada. Priest entity Nada. Artemis entity, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? So, very interesting. First of all, note it's in purple. Okay. Artemis entity, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? It thinks I'm Artemis. They think I'm Artemis. Um, I like to believe, uh, after some conversations with other players, that this is a she. Nada is a she. Well, at least we believe so. Anyway, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? Artemis is definitely female. You know, obviously the name, right? Um, so, this has given you a clue as to the story behind it. Why are they asking if I'm first or last? Am I the first Artemis, the last Artemis? I don't understand that, right? As the story continues, you're going to understand more about that. Remember how you first appeared on the planet, okay? At the beginning of our all of our missions. Time for truth. You have their signal, but you are not Artemis Entity. Tell the truth. I don't lie. Your signal is familiar to Nada. We have been in contact before, I think. This would be a good time to come aboard, yes? A proper introduction to our home. And... Bunk. There it is. Welcome to the anomaly. Now that you have access to the anomaly, you should be able to do some more stuff here. And we'll show you. In multiplayer, you'll see other players inside the anomaly as well. But we're not in multiplayer right now, we're in single player. Multiplayer is turned off. Okay, welcome to the anomaly. We're going to take a quick tour of this place. It's going to show us around anyway. But let's go ahead and talk to Nada. Now, Nada is up there. We have a couple different ways we can get there. We can take the teleporter to get up, or we can walk up the ramp. We can jet up there. I'm going to walk up the ramp this time. That is uh, Ariadne. We think Ariadne is a uh, spy of some sort. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole storyline in itself. That will take some talent. So here's Nada and their companion, Polo. I am Priest Entity Nada, Divergent Corvax. Welcome to our anomaly. Our home is here is pleasant, yes? Polo's own design. A perfect bubble beyond the Sentinels, beyond vengeful Corvax. Nada watches time come and go. So we're going to ask questions in order here. So let's start with Artemis. A traveler entity. Perhaps they are known to you? I do not know their number. Nanda does not care to think about iterations as numbers. You remember that huge number it gave me as far as iteration number, blah, 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 blah. Well, that, we are all numbers in this particular universe. That should tell you something else. They were lost to us, highly improbable. Our anomaly is lost to the Sentinels, but none should be lost to the anomaly. So the anomaly exists in a space-time bubble that is uh, that we can access, um, all the travelers can access, um, but the Sentinels, the Atlas, cannot see us, cannot access this place. Ariadne, we think, is a spy for the Atlas, but that's a whole other ball of wax. The Corvax watches me. There is, there is a patience, an organic tilt to the way they hold their metal shell. So we ask about Nada. Nada awoke with the death of Corvax Prime. Could not understand why such things happen. Why we are alone. Now I am divergent. The convergence do not see through my eyes. The Corvax all speak in a convergent mind, if you will, hive mind. Corvax, she, is separate from all that and is one and is now thinking for themselves. They still speak of themselves in the third person, but they are one. Nada is not alone anymore. Nada is with Polo Friend. Now many other v friends visit. Our convergence is small, but Nada happy. So, still desires that hive mind thing, so it uh, compensates by having friends in the anomaly. So, that works. Nada's carapace pulses with a gentle light. There is something familiar about them. 
Ask about Polo. Polo friend, found Nada. Found my signal. Nada is safe. Now, Nada finds other signals. Makes others safe. The station has been calling to me since I woke up on the planet. Perhaps it called to Artemis as well. It calls to all the travelers. Let's be clear. Ask about the space station. Beyond what is outside, our anomaly wanders free. Free like Nada. To observe, to search. The Sentinels, the Atlas, they do not care for this place. I feel their eyes hunting us. Nada watches me, judging my reactions as they speak. We're going to leave, but... Speak with Polo, friend traveler. Perhaps they might know more about missing Artemis. They perceive things more clearly than Nada. Okay. Now, a lot of people consider me a little bit harsh in regards to Nada, but I always get a kick out of the name Nada. You know, uh, obviously it's another way of saying none or nothing. You know, how, how much of this do you want? Nada. Nothing. No. Nada gives you hints and clues to a lot going on in the universe. Sometimes she holds back information because it's stuff that she doesn't want to talk about. And other times she literally doesn't know anything about the subject but acts like they do. So that's where we go to Polo. Polo gives us a little more information but is a little more uh, straightforward with it. Hi. Let's, let's wave back. How about we do that? That'd be pretty cool. There we go. Okay, so not, uh, Polo knows more, but um, we'll be very straightforward with saying, "Hey, I listen. I don't know anything about that, so not gonna, uh, not gonna gainsay us, if you will." Friends everywhere, if only you know where to look. Friends in all shapes, all sizes, all places. Artemis, friend, well, you are where they should be. Does not seem possible, but all things are possible. Such is the universe. We will find them, no doubt. There is always a signal, always a trace. Okay, ask how. Our home will see to it. When you leave, you will not be where you were. You will be closer. Or maybe not. Discovery is exciting, yes? Before you leave, perhaps spend some time with other friends. We all help with the, help each other here. So, Polo is telling us to walk around the station and get to know everybody here. Now, we can speak to other travelers, to other people here as well. So, we're going to walk around and take a look around. Okay. So, this is the Nada Polo space. You can get to it multiple ways, as you can see. We're going to take a right here at the junction. This is the main area that you come up the main stairs at. And we're going to speak to this individual over here. This, I believe, is Helios? Yes. Helios? Ah, young one. You who still roam the boundaries of the universe. How I envy you. My time out in reality has long passed, but I miss it greatly. Helios will say the same message every single time you talk to them, but we wanted to get through it once. Perhaps you might help an old soul and share the things you've seen? I yearn for the stars, the glory of discovery. So you can share information. If you have new information to share, you can share that information with Helios, and they'll give you some stuff. Occasionally, Helios will also have something uh, of a transmitter that you can get that find derelict freighters. Uh, you don't get that early, it's early on. It's a little too early in the game to get those. So let's give data about the planets. Thank you, little one. You have no idea what this means to me. Please, take these nanites. They are nothing, but they are all I have now. And you don't get much. See? 60 nanites, it's not a big deal. Alright, so now let's turn around. We're going to look for someone else to talk to here. It's sending us in the back to the... Uh, to, to Celine back there. We're going to get to know these two f folks back there. Um, this is your... Um, suit. Exosuit um, appearance modifier so that you can change the appearance of your character if you want. We're going to hold off on that for now. Uh, this is your egg sequencer, so as you get eggs to, to get, um, uh, what do you call it, pets, or your pets lay eggs for you, you can put them in here and adjust those eggs. You can change their size, their temperament, things like that in there. Time for that another time. I don't usually mess with that too much. Uh, iteration Cronus. Cronus takes food that you've created. He'll eat anything, and then he'll judge what you've given him as far as what you uh, have made. And if he likes it, he'll give you a whole bunch of nanites. If he doesn't like it, you'll sometimes get a sneer and get told to walk away. Um, you'll get variations of the amount of nanites. It comes in handy sometimes if you need some extras. And finally, you have Iteration Ares. Ares does two things. Let's talk to Ares real quick. I think we'll talk to them later, but we'll do it now anyway. Traveler hopes to make progress. Traveler tests themselves. I will help. In exchange, progress for progress. Or wealth, perhaps. Experience or materials. Both valid. Today, salvage technology. So, each day, our Ares will 
take in a certain type of item. It could be carbon nanotubes, in this case, salvage de technology. It could be gravitino balls. It could be any number of different things. You can exchange those materials and you'll get a salvage data in return. Oh, pardon me, you, you take trade in the salvage data and you get nanites in return or items in return, if you will. You can also purchase upgrades. They're all C-class, so don't look for anything heavy. But this is also an opportunity that if you have upgrades that you want to get rid of, like for instance, if I go in there right now, Three, basic selection only. Seek space stations for better selections. See, they're all C-class and B-class. You'll get B-class here as well, as you can see. So, and you'll get them for everything, for Minotaurs, Nautilus. Uh, you'll get guns for your ship, uh, drives for your Nautilus. You'll get uh, stuff for your um, multi-tool, uh, cannon modules, underwater protection for yourself, photon cannons for your ship, movement modules things like that you won't get heavy duty stuff you you can get um hyperdrive modules c class ones but they're really not that great so but the thing you can do is you can sell even from your ship so i'm going to sell this i don't need this i was going to use it but i'm not going to use it because i need more nanites the uh, nanites more than i need anything else so we're going to sell it and that'll give us more nanites and if we go back in one last thing i'll try you are ready to exchange we're going to transmit milestone data. This is handy if you really need a, a few hundred um, nanites because, look at the top right, 700 nanites we just got just from transmitting the milestone da data. But we have to do more traveling to get more later, so we're going to hold off on that. We'll go to the other two over there to the left in a little bit. Let's head up here. We're going to visit this area. This is the upgrades area. Uh, technology research um, for both your your multi-tool, your exocraft, your ship, and your exosuit. You've also got buildable materials in the middle terminal there, and you have creatable materials in your uh, terminal over there. Usually um, things that you can make within yourself, like uh, carbon nanotubes, solar mirrors, things like that, items that you make in order to create things or just simply make money. Um, it is sending me to Celine over here. Celine, she has exosuit research. We'll meet her. Traveler, new. Your suit is an extension of yourself. Let me aid you. So we research exosuit upgrades is the only thing you have. And you can now get upgrades from here and spend nanites on the things that you can get. Some of these things you're going to get automatically through the playthrough. So it's up to you if you want to get it. You will get a personal refiner on your own. But I'm telling you, it is so handy to have early game. Uh, but they do require oxygen and chromatic metal to build that in your suit. So keep that in mind. Some of these other things are pretty good. Like you can get protection... For your suit as well for the different planets you're going to visit i leave it up to you if you want to buy all those trade rocket is very interesting to have i've only used it maybe once in the entire time i've ever played so um it's up to you basically so if you're on a planet you can set up your trade rocket put a whole bunch of stuff in it to to sell and it takes off it does a pulse drive to the space station, it lands at the space station, and then it sells all that stuff, and you get the nanites in return, or the uh, nanites or um, credits in return. Um, handy if you're doing a lot of searching along a planet, and you don't feel like leaving anytime soon. So, yeah, very interesting to have. Maybe we'll go ahead and get one of those, because it doesn't cost much. So I'll go ahead and get the trade rocket. As you can see, it takes two wiring looms, some tritium, and dihydrogen in order to use one of these. So... We'll get that. And almost every single time, she'll kick us back out of the menu. So I'm going to go back in. Um, so, yeah, we got shield lattice. We've got an oxygen recycler or rerouter, as case may be, which will help you use a little less um, um, oxygen and life support, if you will. You have a couple other things. Neural stimulator for your jetpack. Um, you get water jets as well. Rocket boots, I hate. I really hate these. I don't know a lot of people that like them. Every time you hit the ground, it does a quick rocket boost jump, and you just hop, skip, and jump across landscapes and up mountainsides, and it actually is a pain in the neck to keep control of. Translators are up to you. You'll get them later on. And finally, you get your airburst engine. The airburst engine, however, is really, really handy. I suggest getting that. Um at some point. You'll be given it later on anyway as a prize, um, but it is really handy because as you fall from the sky, wind flow going into your jets um, will recharge it a little bit at a slow rate, but it's very handy if you're falling from the sky in a tornado. 
and your jetpack is empty. As you fall, your jetpack is recharging, so you can get a little puff at him before you hit the ground, either preventing damage or getting less damage as you hit. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I know I don't have much chromatic metal, but I do want to have a personal refiner on my person. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it. No, I won't grab it early. We'll, we'll wait for it later. This one, this personal refiner you get later on, which is obviously more expensive to build, allows you to refine more complex materials. So you can, it has two slots in it rather than just one. So you're able to combine materials. Very handy. But we're going to hold off on all these for now. I'm just going to get the trade rocket and we'll use that since you don't get it in the missions. This is your multi-tool research. Also contains very nice items that you can use. Um, all the weaponry that you can get including an optical drill, the advanced mining laser, which you now have access to. Um, very good stuff that you can get here. I'm going to hold off getting this because you're going to get most of this for free. Um, finally, you've got your Exocraft research. Nothing special there. We're not doing Exocraft yet, so I'm not going to bother with it. But the starship with Hyperion is very, very good. Um, we go into there, and it's everything that you could ever wonder and hope for. Um, we've got pulse drive stuff. We've got all your weaponry for your uh, for your ship. Landing abilities, including your aqua jets, so you can land on water. We'll hold off on this for now. We'll get those later. The economy scanner is going to be your friend. You are going to get that later. Conflict scanner requires a little more. We're going to get a walker brain in order to build one of those. But the, the economy scanner is going to be really, really handy later on. And we'll worry about that later. I was wondering whether I had one yet or not. But we will get it as a reward, so I'm going to hold myself off. Finally, the two terminals. The construction research terminal. As you can see, it says A and D. I'm going to go back and forth. you got your large buildings, cuboid rooms, and then you have so much different gear that you can get. Cosmetics. Um, base stuff. A lot of us that have been playing for a long time have access to all of these now because we've built them all. As you can see, I can even get my uh, electromagnetic generator, my cloaking unit. I've got some salvage data, but I need more, um, obviously, to get all this stuff. Mineral extractors, um, these floor switches and stuff like that. We've got hydroponics trays. Don't get it yet. People will give that to you. You'll get that in your reward system as you play your missions through. So this is more of an explanatory uh, uh, mission, pardon me, uh, playthrough today than anything else. Lots and lots of other base materials. You'd like, you, you went to your construction terminal down on your planet, and you realize there's not really much that you can build with. Well, this has everything else that you can add in, including windows and doors and smaller pieces and larger pieces, triangular pieces, everything like that, in alloys, uh, timber, uh, stone structures. There's the alloys now, right here, there. Um, and their roofs. You can get wedges, you can get con uh, containers. We're not getting these yet. We're going to get them as a reward, so don't spend your money on them. And then we've come full circle. So there's all your construction materials you can get. we got to speak to Nada. We'll get there in a minute. Um, and this is your synthesis laboratory. This is for new recipes, as you can see. So we can actually make microprocessors. I'm not going to get it now because we get it as a reward later. So, and we get Atlas passes. Those give you access to certain rooms in space stations, as well as items on the planet. But we will get those later. You'll get all three as a reward. So hold off on that. Uh, same thing with the thermal cells and these warp hypercores. We'll get them later. Hold off on it. There's only one other item to the right of this, and that is your valuable products. These are things that you can create and make money with. Uh, you can get a lot of these yellow items here in space stations or from crystals on the ground, things like that. But the rest of these are recipes that you build. Some of them are very expensive. Like this one over here, the fusion igniter and the stasis devices are your most expensive items in the game that you can create on your own that are worth... I believe around 250 million a piece. So they're very, very valuable. In stacks, you can sell them and get billions of credits. So, moving on. Let's get out of this area. To the left, real quick, um, you've got two little buddies down here that usually you're you're meeting, but I've I've gone through all the terminals, so that's why it's not meeting them right now. This is Gemini and Hesperus. And you can talk to them, get some storylines out of them. Nothing special I've ever had happen with speaking to them. So, hello, have we met? I do not believe so. I'm Gemini. This is Hesperus. Ask about Gemini. Me? I'm just staying here just for a little while. Polo and Nada are very kind to all their friends. That's all you get. 
Gemini glances toward the being at their side, their golden eyes contemplative. If it weren't for Hesperus, I'd probably still be alone out there, drifting from world to world, entire galaxies to discover, no one to share it with. I've never found genuine comp company in the others. Genuine company in the others. Even the Gex, for all their talk of friendship, they all seem to want something. Hesperus is different. They've been a true companion to me. It was a pleasure meeting you. Say hello if you pass through again. We'll be right here, more than likely. And that's it. Just a storyline. You'll get the same kind of thing from Hesperus as they're stretching. Uh, salutations. Greetings and salutations. Reminds me of somebody that watches my episodes and is on the live streams. Ronnie. The sharp-eyed being stares at me, unblinking. They tell me their name, Hesperus, but rush through the words as though nuisanced by the introduction. Their focus is on me. Tell me, stranger, who exactly are you? A wanderer? A traveler? I am a traveler. Hesperus must... Hesperus's mustache quivers when I mirror the term they have chosen, traveler. The word hangs in the air. I believe we tread parallel paths, you and I, and yet, quite impossibly, we have met. Let us not make this our only encounter. And that's it. So, these are travelers. They're NPC travelers, so you can talk to them whenever you wish, if you wish. Um, final areas, real quick. You know the landing area. We'll get to that in just a second. This up here is the main portal. It's larger than most, as you can see. Nothing special. This fella here, Mercury. Have you stood before a portal, stranger? Feel it leech the life from your skin? Feel Felt your chest burning as its power starts to melt your very being? Um, you have. The traveling arrows their eyes staring at me, judging my calm. My claim. After a moment, they nod. There is respect upon their face. I stood before the portal at Solith Prime. Solith Prime but did not cross the threshold. I reached out, only the tip of my finger grazed the gateway. The next moment I awoke aboard the anomaly, I was transformed. The gateway here does not have the power of the ancient monoliths, though it shares aspects of the network. Use it as you wish, not with respect. Mercury returns my nod. There's much understanding in this simple gesture. Okay, so nothing special here. This isn't anything. Um, this is the portal, takes us to many different areas, like any portal in space stations. Uh, or at your planet. The difference about this interstellar ter terminus is that you also have access to other people's bases that have been uploaded. Community highlights are here and allows you access to really neat constructs that people have made um, and you can go there as well as your own systems and systems you've been to before. These give you access, oh we see it kind of bounced out of there for a second. These give you access also to different systems that you've, or, or galaxies that you may never have been to <clears throat> pardon me, been to before. So it is a way to find other galaxies as well when they get highlighted. So that's something. You can go to your recent systems, featured systems, of course, that they're showing you, your own bases, and space stations that you might have been to, as well as group systems that you can go to as well. So that is what this is for. Uh, the back corner there, we'll get to it another time. Over here is a construct. We will get into the storyline regarding that construct later on. Uh, you also have Iteration Tethys, that they'll are involved with the later uh, mission as well. And you have a multi-tool decommissioning station here. So if you have any multi-tools that you want to get rid of, let's let's check ours as a matter of fact. Let's see what we got. Um, that's the only one we have. As you know, we used this earlier. And, and you can decommission multi-tools here and get parts from them. We sold ours in order to get another one. So that's where you can get rid of stuff here. And this little teleport thing just brings us down to floor level. Very nice back to our ship a couple last places over here three last places we're going to show you this is your nexus where you can get your nexus mission uh from the anomaly as we do every week um we shouldn't have access to that yet it rejects my input whenever it's purpose it appears i am not yet authorized to use it i should find and speak to the inhabitants of the station before returning so we will have access to this later too new in this particular playthrough this is the expedition terminal so if there's an expedition currently going on, which there is at the moment, we can do the expedition from this state save, even right now. Now everybody starts out at the same level, so yeah, you can do the expedition if you wish, even from a brand new save like this. And then finally, this is your Quicksilver Vendor. The Quicksilver Vendor has four levels. It has um, Twitch Rewards, Expedition Rewards, which you get from the expedition, obviously. And it gives you the items on how to earn Quicksilver, usually through that nexus. And then creating exotic items exotic items from the Quicksilver you have gained. So that is your third item of stuff that you can get. If you look at your menu here, the Quicksilver, that is your third uh, type of credit that you can have up here. Okay, so that's how you buy that stuff. Oh, I forgot we had that. 
thick. But, uh, and that's pretty much it here, folks. I'm going to use this dihydrogen while I'm here real fast just to get that out of the way and put this in my ship. We need chromatic metal. We're running a little low on that, aren't we? All right. Do we have anything else in there? Yeah, we're going to need to get some chromatic metal at some point. Either we can purchase it or we can get it in other means. All right. We're on our way. Okay, so we're done with this area. We're going to be wrapping this mission up here today just a little bit early because I just wanted to give you a run through of this place. Oh, we got to talk to... I see I'm already forgetting my mission. Hold on a second. It wants us to install the trade rocket. We're going to hold off on that. We want to go back to this. So we need to speak to Nada. Now, to get up there, we can use our jetpack, but you may have to do a quick skip and jump. There we go. And we can go all the way up. Alright, what does she have to say? Nada and Polo drift between worlds and worlds. There are many. Have you seen them, Traveler Friend? Nada wishes they could. Nada regrets much. So, Nada can't really leave the station. If they do, the Atlas is going to find them. So, that's why. Traveler Entity is free to make their own path. Find Artemis Entity. Explore with others. Travel to great sites. Proceed as you will, Traveler Entity. We will aid you. Others will aid you also. Even if you seek the Crimson Liar. Okay. So, we get a choice here between the three. Do we, help for, we, do we get help for exploration, help with finding Artemis, or, or ask about the Crimson Liar, which is the Atlas? We are doing our Artemis run-through, so let's do the Artemis... Of course, Nada has a small gift for you. Perhaps it will help, perhaps not. Nada and Polo Friend will continue to search. Speak to us whenever you desire. And if you look at the top right, you're getting 120 nanites in order to help you out in your search. Um, we can speak to Polo. Polo will usually just talk to us a little bit. We were so lonely, Nada and I, before we found each other. Before we found you, friend. All of you. So many friends to share this time with. You feel the same, I hope. And that's it. And you don't really get anything but that dialogue. Okay. So we're done here in the Anomaly. I'm going to go ahead and call our episode a little bit early today. And we're going to continue on by leaving this Anomaly and going on to the next section of our um, our playthrough here. So I'm just going to do a quick save. There we go. And we're all done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody.